This video is sponsored by the Nick Box, a quarterly subscription box which ships out every three months. If you want to stay tuned until the end of the video, I actually unbox one. And if you want to check it out for yourself, check the link in the description. The Parody Movie. A genre capable of explicitly revealing the trends and potential problems within a genre or individual film. But usually, it doesn't. Parody movies can be funny, but they need to be well thought out. Something like Young Frankenstein is funny, but it's also a loving tribute to the film it's based on, using the same kind of cameras and filming techniques as the original. A lot of great parody movies come from a place of love and respect, but it's a genre that totally cannibalized itself. The movie series and all its spin-offs and rip-offs totally killed the genre and potential respect for this kind of filmmaking. I mean, how do you make fun of the hit 2004 film Napoleon Dynamite? You just hire an actor to do a Napoleon Dynamite impression. It writes itself. The parody movie became a gross-out, over-sexualized, and cringe-worthy genre. And I mean more cringe-worthy than unironically using the word cringe to criticize something. Or ironically. But there are gems in the parody genre, and I think I've rediscovered the biggest diamond of them all. That's right. Invitation to Love, the parody soap opera from Twin Peaks. But today, we're talking about the Thumb movies. Thumbs was maybe is, a series of short parody films developed by Steve Oderkirk, a comedy filmmaker best known for his work on the Ace Ventura films and franchises like Jimmy Neutron and Back at the Barnyard. Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, of course, was nominated for an Oscar. Since Oderkirk was a producer, this guy was technically Oscar nominated. Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, Steve Oderkirk. And Neat! You remember this? Oh! That's Oderkirk's company, O Entertainment, who were the producers of Thumbs. The Thumb series is comprised of six films and a few shorts. It parodies a variety of classic and then modern movies. Thumb Wars, Thumb Tannic, The God Thumb, Franken Thumb, The Blair Thumb, and Bat Thumb. The most famous being Thumb Wars, because it was often airing on Cartoon Network as a precursor to The Clone Wars and other networks like UPN. It's Thumb Wars! I'm sorry, what was that last part? Thumb Wars, Thumb Wars, Thumb Wars! For some reason, Thumb Wars even had a special promotional tie-in with Cinnabon when it came out in 2001. Of course, this tie-in featured a cinnamon roll themed after Princess Bunhead, the Leia stand-in for the filmette. And, of course, it was a lot more tasteful than Cinnabon's tweet after the passing of Carrie Fisher. Thumb Wars and Thumb Tannic were released as a double feature DVD and PSP UMD, which is how I initially saw them. I loved Star Wars parodies as a kid. I thought they were so hilarious. It's like, making fun of Star Wars? What a revolutionary idea! Movies will never be the same! And Thumb Wars was no exception. Look, I am your mother! <laughs> Thumb Wars tells the story of Loke Groundwalker, as he and a ragtag team of thumbs attempt to stop the nail side of the thumb from turning every thumb into the galaxy into a nail thumb. <gasps> Fascinating. Loke is a parody of Luke with all his whiny habits, and he's introduced to the power of the thumb when he meets a would-be Obi-Wan Kenobi. I am Ubi Doo Banubi. I have the silliest name in the galaxy. What's your middle name? Scooby Dooby. Ubi Doob Scooby Dooby Banubi? Thumb Wars is the silliest thing in all the galaxy. It's not really a critique of Star Wars, but rather it's just a recount of the story told by someone who's really only seen the original Star Wars trilogy once. The kind of jokes told are very surface level observations like, oh wow, Harrison Ford. What's the opposite of a father? A mother. And Yoda is clearly a puppet. I think that's kind of what sets it apart from other Star Wars parodies. It's not a tribute made out of loving appreciation, but it seems like the observations of an old man who doesn't really get Star Wars. However, when that surface level silliness is replaced with an attempt at a slightly edgier joke, it falls flat. And that goes for all the Thumb movies. I like edgy humor, but it has to be in a world where that's the standard. When we go from Ubi Doo Kanubi to looking up Leia's skirt, or from a giant tarantula to a genital mutilation joke at the expense of trans folks, it just doesn't work. It's a tonal whiplash, and it's not a purposeful one. Thumb Wars is silly, and it works when it doesn't really try to be anything else. It's bizarre, but that's kind of why I like it. I mean, I didn't pick this up thinking, wow, I can't wait to get new insight on this beloved classic. And in a way, the Thumb movies are decently impressive in terms of their production value. 
I'm a big fan of model miniatures and love puppets in movies. A lot. Controversially, I don't really think real thumbs are used as often as they try to make it seem. They look more like thumb-themed puppets moved around by off-screen hands. I was able to find some behind-the-scenes images on an Oderkirk fan site, and it shows not every character was a thumb. And I don't even know why I'm looking this far into it. Although Thumbs calls this kind of animation, Thumbimation, a similar method was used before by Nickelodeon for the Kablam and all that spinoff series Action League Now. Nick called it Chuckamation. However, the Thumb movies like to go one step beyond. They combined this animation method with Synchrovox animation. Synchrovox is an animation method developed in the 1950s by Edwin Gillette. It's a cost-cutting technique which cuts out real lips and superimposes them onto mouths of cartoon characters. Shows like Clutch Cargo experimented with Synchrovox, but the method wasn't used much after a few experimental shows because of its creepy nature. Courage the Cowardly Dog used this creepiness to its benefit, however, and it regained prominence in the early 2010s from the popularity of The Annoying Orange. I first saw it while watching this Incredibles cartoon parody. I hated it as a kid, but I kind of love it now, it's just so odd. While Thumb Wars has become a micro cult classic, the rest of these films are sort of a cult micro classic. A lot of the re-uploads on YouTube rarely break 100,000 views. Oscar nominee Steve Oderkirk wanted to keep making Thumb movies past the initial six, but the closest he got to the Thumb Matrix and World Thumb Wrestling was a short lampooning the 2008 election. The other five Thumb movies never quite hit the same charming level of silliness as Thumb Wars. If you were going to watch the other Thumb movies, I'd suggest Thumb Tannic. It has that same kind of I'm an old guy who doesn't really get these movies energy. The scenes and moments it makes fun of are just so obvious, like I'm king of the world. I'm a dentist! Or Jack draws a naked girl. But there are moments which are just stupidly hilarious, like the tarantula climbing on the boat right before they hit the iceberg. Blair Thumb is just as silly as silly can be. It's just a bunch of dumb teenagers going out into the woods to make a movie. So is Vic short for Victor? Uh, uh, no, victim. My dad was bludgeoned to death. There's this moment which parodies a famous scene from the Blair Witch Project where they're all inside a tent and somebody starts banging on the tent. You never see the Blair Witch, but here you actually do see a monster. But this joke landed so hard for me as a kid, and it still does here. It's just so dumb and so unexpected, but ends up being so stupidly funny. Do you think, you think it's gone? I love The Blair Witch. It truthfully is a good horror film, but some people just didn't really get it and didn't really like it. But that's kind of what I like about The Blair Thumb. It just feels like an old man yelling at a cloud. However, I think Franken Thumb, The God Thumb, and Bat Thumb just drops the ball. I mean, I'm not holding these other ones up to a high standard or anything. I just barely had any tiny little baby giggles from these three. There are a few standout moments, like how they handle the horse head scene from The Godfather, the villain's Rube Goldberg machine in The Bat Thumb, and this absolute gem from Franken Thumb. <laughs> But at this point, I feel like I'd seen everything this series has to offer. I do kind of like the callback jokes from the other films when they do happen, but I feel so ashamed for being invested in the series enough to get them. A lot of these would probably work a lot better as three to seven minute shorts as opposed to half hour specials. And I mean truly half hour, like 30 minutes, not 22 minutes. I do know a lot of these aired on TV, and I'd be very interested to see the 22 minute cuts of them to see if they work any better, because by the end of nearly every one, I'm sick of it. Then again, I'm not really sure these are the kind of things you're supposed to marathon. It might just work better as a weird thing that pops up on TV unexpectedly at 3 a.m. Sometimes your enjoyment of something depends on whether or not you're in the mood to watch it. And by the end of these, I wanted to watch anything else. After searching around for a bit, I was able to find a TV cut of Thumb Wars on YouTube. It has eight minutes cut off of it and it flows a little better. It doesn't have the time to drag on, I guess. I don't know why I'm trying to offer these things thoughtful criticism. While there were plans to make other Thumb parody movies, I don't really think people were interested. I mean, how many of these do you really need to see before you get the joke? 
Through researching online and looking around, I was able to find this, however, thumb.com. It has this little gif of an electric thumb and a countdown clock counting down to December 1st, 2019. I don't really think it's going to lead to anything, but apparently it is run by O Entertainment, so who knows? Thumbs is just one of the silliest and most absurd things I've seen in a very long time. There's no thoughtful conclusion here, it's just sort of an end. Go check it out if you want to, or don't, at all costs. I know my last two brain cells will. This video is sponsored by The Nick Box, a quarterly subscription box which ships out every three months. Now, the people over at Culturefly were so nice to send me over one so I can unbox it, and you guys can get your own through an exclusive link down below. Be sure to use the link in my description. That's how you help me out. Okay, is this a vinyl figure from Ah Real Monsters? Uh, in a video a little bit ago, I was explaining how I was watching this in October. Uh, that's, uh, oh my god, this is gonna be a test right now. That's Ickis, Crumb, and Oblina. Oh, look at that. That's so cute. Uh, the next thing that I got here is a Clarissa Explains It All fanny pack. It's uh, it's as 90s as 90s can be with all those little geometric shapes. And I love that color palette. This whole office is that kind of teal, pink, and blue color palette. So uh, I'm going to become a fanny pack person just because of this. And I am going to wear this uh, next time we go out. So uh, are you looking forward to that? No. <laughs> I think this character was a little before my time. I think that's Stick Stickly, who was a Nickelodeon host for a programming block, if I remember quickly or correctly. Yeah, there we go. This is a cute little shirt. He's a little, little stick boy. Or some Legends of the Hidden Temple uh, paraphernalia, I guess would be the right way to describe that. Uh, this is, that's Olmec, the, the, big, the big head from Legends of the Hidden Temple. And now this is actually a little close to home because uh, I live in Orlando and this show was filmed at Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando. So uh, I'm repping uh, a show that was filmed right here in my hometown. And we got some coasters too, Team Animal coasters. We just got a new wood coffee table. So those will literally go out there right after we're done filming this. Oh, that's so cute. So thank you so much to Culturefly for sending out this box. Uh, I always love unboxing things. It's always super exciting. And if you want your own, be sure to click the link in the description down below. They ship out every quarter. So if you want to get one, be sure to use my link because that's how it benefits me. So if you want to check it out, it helps out the show. Uh, and thank you again. If you've seen these movies before, tell me which one is your favorite. And if you haven't, tell me which one you're interested in down below. That's right, I'm asking questions now. Also, give this video a like. If you want to follow me on social media, that stuff's in the description down below. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a good day, and I will see you soon.